guys having fun so far? Awesome. All right, so welcome to the My Little, po uh, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic panel. We have some great people here for you guys. Um, so first, I'd like to introduce uh, Brenda Hickey. She is a comic artist uh, from PEI, and her most famous work is on IDW's My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comic book. So her other works include uh, Tatian in the Halls of the Turnip King and web comic, her webcomic In the Air. Our next guest is Lenore Zahn. Uh, she uh, is an award-winning actor, writer, producer of 33 years. She's Rogue from X-Men. Uh, Starcatcher from My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. as well as Lorca from Dragon Tales, and she is a member of the Legislative Assembly of Nova Scotia for Truro, Bible Hill, Millbrook, and Salmon River. <laughs> and last but not least, we have Mr. John Delancey, a writer, director, and host of multiple productions of many genres. We know him as Frank Simmons from Stargate SG-1, Q on Star Trek Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. And of course, for this panel, Discord from My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. <laughs> Brenda, are you coming out? <laughs> All right, so how we're going to do it is that there are mics on each of the rows, so please just feel free to come and ask questions to all of our lovely panelists. Yes, now. You know what? Um, why don't you put the lights up so that we can actually see people? Is that possible? Yeah, that's better. Yeah. yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. There we go. <clears throat> so you are. You're all here for, for Batman, right? Is that it? <laughs> uh, uh, who has some questions? Yes, go ahead. Hi, uh, my question's for you, actually. Um, I was just wondering, when you were approached, of, or when uh, the character of Discord was brought up, did they basically say, we want you to play Q, but in a cartoon? No, they didn't. Uh, when I was approached, uh, do you know the story about that? Because I put it, I, I did a documentary about bronies. How many of you have seen that? <laughs> you did? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, um, what is the name of the company that, that, that owns um, My Little Pony? Hasbro. Hasbro was a little concerned. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I went, well, did, you know. Uh, you know, whatever it's called, uh, free market or, uh, um, but it, uh, so in any case, I, um, what happened was is that I got a call from my agent and my agent said, uh, you have an offer for my, uh, and, and, and that's how it went into my head. I, I didn't really listen to that part. Uh, I asked three questions, which is what an actor asks. And I would imagine anybody here asks, and you, in a way, ask the same thing. Uh, I, need, uh, I need to see the material. When is it, and how much? <laughs> okay? So those things have to fall into place. And you usually say you need two of the three. They said, well, um, I said, send me the material right away and they sent me the material right away. And I looked at it, I read maybe about three pages, four pages, that's all. And I could tell, oh, this is well written. And they wanted the answer right away, so I simply called up and I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. I mean, it was a kid's cartoon. How, you know, how bad could it be? <laughs> um, so my thought was, um, sure. I. I prep the material, it takes me about an hour and a half, two hours the night before. I go in, I, I um, recorded it, it, takes me about an hour and a half, two hours at the most. Um, and, um, and I went home never to think about it again. <laughs> and three months later, 
I ended up going down to my, um, uh, my uh, computer and there were maybe 400 emails in my email thing. And they were all talking about MLP. <laughs> and I called, and then I figured, my little pony. And I called up to my wife, and I went, what, what do you know about my little pony? I was pretty uh, uh, upset because somebody had hacked into my email. Like, what do you know about my little pony? And she said, well, it's, a, it, you know, it's something that you did about three months ago, and it's a cartoon for little girls. And I went, well, these are not little girls. That are right now. <laughs> and that was the beginning of my experience. And I did not think of that char the character of Q. I don't go around doing that. Um, every show has its own uh, uh, vibration, its own rhythm, its own, its own thing. And so now, in retrospect, having then met Lauren Faust, who said, you know, I went to the studio, I said that we have a new character, uh, its name is Discord, and he's this and this and this and this, and they were like, well, we don't really understand. Well, think of Q on Star Trek. And they went, oh, do you think we could get John Delancey to do it? <laughs> That's, that was, but I didn't know any of that. Thank you very much, and I just wanted to say that Q is my favorite Star Trek character. <laughs> Hi, um, my question for all of you is that if you had your own cutie mark, what would you want it to look like? <laughs> well, actually, one day when I was like, you know, I feel like drawing, but I don't feel like doing the comic right now. I designed myself as a pony, and I thought about that question. I'm like, what would my cutie mark be? And I agonized, and I'm like, well, it would be a pencil. What would it be? But I didn't know how to make a pencil interesting. And so then I thought about it, the more I thought about it, and it's like, well, what do I like? What kind of brought me into comics? And I thought of Sailor Moon and the magical girl stuff I grew up with and was totally enamored with. I'm like, what if it was a pencil as like a power-up wand for magical girls? So I designed that, and it's kind of like a hybrid card capture Sakura meets Sailor Moon with a pencil as the base. So I'm like, yeah, that, I think that suits me. <laughs> I like that one. So that would be my cutie mark. Well, my last name is Zan, which is a different kind of name. And so I've always signed my signature with a big Z, like a Zorro mark. So I'd like to have a big Zorro mark on my butt. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my cutie mark. <laughs> uh, I have a sailboat, and I sailed from California to the South Seas two years ago, I guess. And, um, and I, it's something I had wanted to do all my life. And... Um, on the island of Hiva Oa in the Marqueses, where Robert Louis Stevenson and uh, Melville, as young guys, um, had been on that beach and what have you, I had a, um, a, a cutie mark of sorts uh, put here in the old-fashioned way with the, uh, with the, the, the bab bamboo oh. and the ink and what have you. So. Yeah. And what is it? Oh, it's a, <laughs> it's a Z. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, well, let's just say it doesn't say mother on it. <laughs> okay. Okay, next. Um, this one's at John Delancey. Um, can I just get you to say one thing? Like, well, a sentence? No. <laughs> no, honestly, I'm not going to do that. Oh. No, no, no. I'll, I'll get, what is it? But this sandwich is mine. The what? The but sandwich? this sandwich is mine. But this sandwich is mine. Yes. They, that's it. You see, it's, 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 they always fall flat. I, I went for it the first time, and then afterwards I began going, these things don't actually work. <laughs> Okay, context. next. Uh, yeah, I have a question for you, John. No, no, it's got to also be everybody else. <laughs> hmm. So think of your questions for everybody as, as well, okay? Okay, so well, I'll answer this one, but then the next person. Then I'd be taking too much time. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I think I'll formulate a question for you two after. <laughs> okay. Um, when vo voicing Discord in the studio, do you ever try to imagine all the chaotic things that this character could do, and does that make it 
better? Sort of does that portray that character better, like as you voice him? Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, you are, you are, I'm not trying to think of all the chaotic things that he could do. I'm trying to think of that particular chaotic thing that he is doing. Um, but you want to speak a little bit more to the, the, the art of, um, of voice acting. I mean, how you get into some of these moments when they're crazy moments and like, for instance, on Rogue, on the X-Men, of course, you know, my dad had to kill himself when he found out I was a mutant is one of my favorite lines to say. But um, one of the first things, we're both theater actors. We, you know, we both do theater and theater is a great base to learn how to act. Um, it teaches you uh, discipline and it also teaches you how to really get in touch with the character and with your own essence that you can put into the character. So when I first was cast in, as Rogue in the X-Men, um, <laughs> I had no experience in learning how to fly and then sound like I'm getting into a fight with somebody up in the sky, whipping them around, throwing them down on the ground, then flying and hitting a big building and picking up a building and then carrying it and dropping it somewhere and then being hit by a, a storm that, which whirls you around like a tornado and you're going up in the tornado and then you're going down in the tornado and then you're hitting the ground and slamming the ground. I mean, you have to use your imagination. And so, um, I find that being a voice actor is really like being a child and getting paid for it. Because <laughs> you get to really use your imagination and imagine what would it be like and what would, what would your voice sound like to, to do that? You know, like, Whoa! and then like, Wah! and then t hitting the ground and tumbling. Lots of fun. Um, and, but the other point, and, and the thing with the X-Men people noticed was that there was a lot of really real emotion and they wanted, they didn't want us to be like cartoon characters. They wanted real actors. So they got a lot of theater actors in Toronto to play the characters in the X-Men. And they just kept saying, don't try and sound like a cartoon, just be real. And I find that's, that's what I think has also given it the, a, like a lasting quality because people really relate to the characters and can, can get into the emotions. That's why I find it fun. Yeah. And Mine isn't voice acting per se, but I do have to think when I get the scripts for the comics of how are these characters going to act out these scenes visually. So I've actually had the fortunate chance to work on a couple issues with the character Discord written by Jeremy Whitley, and he writes some great dialogue for the character. So I take what he says and, you know, I don't, he's great too to let me kind of put my own visual interpretation to his scripts. So, like, he'll give me a panel, it's like, you know, Discord's talking with his hand, talking to Luna. So I'm like, you know, I could take that the next step. So I actually made him talking with his hands like this, <laughs> like off panel, and it's just his hands are sticking in. So I got a lot of opportunity to kind of play with the comics medium to make the characters act out their lines. So I always find that stuff really fun, and Discord is just, he's complicated to draw because of, you know, matching, like, figuring out what side's this arm on, but he's, he's a lot of fun to stage and to, like, frame around because he's long, the pony characters are fairly square shaped and he can kind of border around them and snake around them in interesting ways or yeah and using the panels also like I had him walking on the top of the panel upside down in one scene just because I could and I could do anything like with the comics medium to make them act out these stories so yeah Discord is definitely one of the top and Pinkie Pie because she's she kind of breaks all those those barriers too I can kind of go hog wild with her visually as well and I'm surprised Hasbro hasn't recalled some of those weird expressions I've been drawing in the comics so I'm very fortunate they're very lenient with my bizarre like I kind of like to say, I'm a bit Tex Avery with my <laughs> with my pony style. They can they can get pretty ex extreme e expressions on them. So. Great. Next, <laughs> thank you. Hello. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. What's your question? Well, the next person whose what mouth is not wired shut, then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what has My Little Pony Friendship is Magic done for you? Example, was it just a job? Did it connect to you at some point in a way? Did it touch your heart? 
what has it done for you? Hmm, that's a good question. Oh, for me, um, hmm, I'd have to think about that one a little bit. So <laughs> if we okay. could, yeah. Um, uh, uh, go ahead. Um, well, My Little Pony, I, I play Star Catcher in My Little Pony, which is the Pegasus Pony. She was the first one. She has wings and a unicorn horn and rainbow colors. And as a little girl, I, that would be my favorite character. I know that because I always loved the magical quality. I love magic and I've always been into the fantasy stories. And, um, and the thing I love about Starcatcher is that wherever she comes, your wishes come true. So all you have to do is wish for something and she can help make it come true. And that's why, you know, her signature thing is, um, whatever you wish, it shall be done. And so she's got a very magical quality and a very calming effect on people. And I think that has parlayed now into being in politics to a certain degree where I, I really want to make things happen for people. I want to be able to help people and make their wishes come true. Although in the legislature, I don't think that it works very well <laughs> in, on the inside. <laughs> and if I talked like that, they probably wouldn't hear me. They'd be screaming and yelling over top of me. So, But um, it, it's a fantastic opportunity to get in touch with various sides of your personality. Every character has many different aspects that relate to you as a person. And that's why acting is so much fun, because you get to tap into those emotions and, and use them and, and use different sides of your personality and your psyche. John? Um, I think that it's probably that it, it introduced me to the Brony community. And um, I think also through that uh, um, documentary that we did, we sort of gave cover to the brony community by by um, by saying it was okay and um, and I, and so a lot of people that have now come in under that umbrella so in that respect I'm I'm happy to um, I, I've been touched by it and then I was happy to um, par uh, not participate but to, to um, contribute to it as well okay next um, I, it's a pretty simple question, but who are your favorite ponies? Favorite ponies? Yes. Fluttershy for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and why? Sorry, the why. <laughs> uh, well, growing up, I was very shy. I would just, you know, I, I don't know if you noticed, <laughs> but yeah, um, I would be the kid in the back of the classroom, you know, with head down, just drawing away, hoping nobody noticed me. So I can really relate to her struggles a lot and just kind of putting yourself out there and being confident in the skills that you have and, you know, being okay with yourself to share that with the people around you and, you know, potential friends and potential, you know, connections you can make with people. So yeah, seeing her kind of come out of her shell, but then also have those moments where it's like, it's okay to take my time to do what I need to do to get to that next level is really, a good message for somebody like me who struggled with that growing up. So. John, you <laughs> <clears throat> I think Discord is my favorite pony because <laughs> I'm an egotistical uh, <laughs> SOB and I don't see anything else up there. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. You know, it's it's funny because when when you're an, when you're a voice actor, oftentimes you go in the booth. I don't know how you do yours, but you're you're alone. And so, uh, those of us who travel a lot, I mean, I have recorded my characters for most of the different shows in a million different cities. So, I'll go into the booth, and I only ever really see my scenes, and the scenes that I'm in, or, or even just my lines. So, I don't really get to um, interact with the other characters or see who they are, to be honest. Um, and I don't tend to watch my own shows. You don't I, you watch know, the show? No, I bear, no really? not really, no. The, like, the only time, I, recently, like last Christmas, somebody posted it, something on Facebook because it was um, like a very minty Christmas was one. It's a video and it's out and, and th th we sing in it. And we all got to sing, which was really fun, right? And, uh, and so I, I actually watched part of it, 
but I've never really watched an entire show. And it's the same with my movies. And I don't, I just, I kind of do them and then I move on to the next one, to be honest. So, you know, I, I personally, I just think the show itself is so cool. And I, I'm friends with the actors, so like Tara Strong, you know, she's a fantastic young actress and I love anything that she's in. So I, I tend to pay attention to her. But uh, other than that, Sailor Moon, you know, the girl that played Sailor Moon was a good friend of mine. Uh, I mean, you know, so I know them as people. And the same with the X-Men. I know all of those people that were in the X-Men. And I, and I have real life memories of them. So I tend to go with that more, more than our characters. You know, we, we do our characters for a few minutes and then we're real. And that's what I tend to remember. So I don't really have a favorite character in, in, in that particular show. I just I love them all. I just think they all have, they all give something. And every kid that, and young, young men these days have their favorites. And I just get a kick out of that, that my, my 15 year old nephew is into the bronies. He's a brony. And he was like, he didn't even realize that I was in, in the original show or anything. He saw that online. He's like, oh my gosh, my aunt played in that show. And he's like, so he said, do you know Tara Strong? I'm like, yeah, she's one of my friends. And, you know, so, it, it, you know, you live through the kids, but, um, I just love, I love the show. I love that it's got legs and it's going again and that people are really into, into it again now in a different way. So, yeah, that's what I would say for that question. I couldn't have said it better myself. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, a good yeah, tag team. You, you, uh, the, the reality is, is that it's sort of a bus, it would be sort of a busman's holiday for us to watch these things. Um, you don't really watch it in the same way or we don't really watch it in the same way that you do. Yeah. We watch it going, ooh, oh God, did I, <laughs> oh, I could have been so much better, or do I really look that way, and, or I need to lose weight, or, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, an endless barrage of self-flagellation <laughs> that, that takes place. I feel place. like that looking at my comics issues, I'm like, they're yeah. like, I love the art, and I'm like, don't look at the art. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right. Uh, and also, uh, I too am, am doing, uh, for this one, um, uh, I, I, I too record alone. I mean, I was just brought back, uh, there's a big game that's coming out that I did. And they had done the um, B-roll, the whole thing that has to do with the publicity of it and what have you. Apparently something happened uh, that where the where the material was unusable. Believe me, that company will never be asked again because it was, it's a Warner Brothers show and they farmed it out. And the, 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 so they asked us to come back. And I did it just the day before coming here. The big concern was that I, and then when I got there, I discovered from the producers, oh yeah, well, you're not the only one, didn't remember any of it. We didn't just we just didn't remember any of it. It was yeah. it was like seven months ago, right. and what was uh, Masters of Orion? I, I I don't know what <laughs> what was that. And can you show me some of the lines so that I can remember again? And you know, well, John, we're going to talk to you. Uh, you know, you don't have to actually remember in the same way. We're going to sort of feed you some of the responses. And I went, well, I don't know about that, but uh, you know, so it 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 when you work on something for as short a period of time, which is sometimes just a few hours. Yeah. It just doesn't stick. When you, the, the, the other side of that is that you can say, I can remember every play I've been in because it took a month of rehearsing and then it yeah. took months of performing and I, you know, it, it really begins to penetrate into you. But there are a lot of shows there who, that I've done, even on camera shows where I go, God, really? I did that? I don't, I don't remember. Okay, next. Um, so MLP's comeback, it, the designs changed, the artwork has changed, the actors have changed, um, and it's just got such a mass appeal um, as shown in your Brony documentary. Um, as someone who was introduced to MLP by a Brony and a three-year-old girl at the same time and who fell in love with it, I have struggled so many times to figure out what, why I'm so attached to it and I was just wondering if you guys had any insight into why it's so appealing to so many people and why it's 
come back so big? I think it's just super accessible. Like everybody can relate to somebody on the show for sure. Like you, you can just put yourself in the place of the characters in the different situations and yeah, and they're just fun and quirky and they feel real. So yeah, and definitely that whole, they feel encouraging to you too. Like they're your friends, like instant friends. It's awesome. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, these are things, uh, when a show becomes very successful, there's a lot of scrutiny on why. Mm -hmm. And um, you can well imagine, Star Trek is probably uh, one of the biggest examples mm -hmm. of that. Um, if everybody really knew why, they would be bottling it and, and <laughs> pouring it over every show. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, so, you, the accessibility of the characters. And of course, when you were saying that, I was thinking, well, when Lauren wrote them, she was trying to make sure that there were, in fact, delineated characters that had to do with human beings and their characteristics. So you kind of go, oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. Um, um, one layer beyond that is why would... Um, the, the, the documentary essentially was why are 20 year old guys watching a cartoon intended for 10 year old girls? Um, which is I think a, actually a very interesting question uh, and a sociologic question. Um, and um, so we struggled with this, the answers to that question and actually went into it frankly not knowing at all. Um, there are a couple of psychologists who have done some interesting work on it. Uh, they're actually coming out with a book not in, in, in the near future. Um, uh, I know from the point of view of the brony culture that these were not the A-type they were not going to be the captain of the football team and the girl wasn't going to be the prom queen. So then the question is, is that has our society allowed for, for them? And um, here was a show that postulated a, um, that there were rules, that if you followed those rules, also it's a secular show, if there were rules, and if you follow those rules, then in most instances, good things would happen. It was also a show where one could talk about, I mean, the, not the last one, uh, uh, but one of the ones in which I did, I thought it was a really interesting show because I, I would talk to um, you know, adults who don't have a clue about My Little Pony or, or anything else. I would say, you know, this was a show that I did about um, jealousy, about friends. I have a friend, and now we're bringing in, I want you to meet my other friend, becomes very jealous over this. And you kind of go, oh, well, I can understand, eight-year-old girls are gonna become very jealous. And I went, no, 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 I know 80-year-old men who become very jealous. <laughs> so that was, the, so the subject matter is, they are able through the guise of a, of a happy world, of a, of a colorful world, to also deal with things that are much more complex and seemingly um, get through. So, I don't know, that's my two cents today. That, that's interesting because, um, in a way, it's a safe place for them to feel their emotions, right? right. And I find that most shows that have, a, have legs, as we say, you know, that that keep going or come back or come back in various forms, there's usually some kind of a universal theme that can, people can relate to no matter their age and no matter the, what country they come from. So for instance, the X-Men, for instance, like next year that is gonna be the 25th anniversary of the original series. And the original cast, I was told, are gonna be, we're gonna be invited to come to Co Comic-Con in San Diego next year, which should be interesting, um, you know. And have you been? Have you been? seen? Have I seen? Have, have, have I been, been there? there? No, oh. I haven't. I, I've I been to be San Diego there. once. I wasn't tabling, but I was going around with my husband. We had a few signings with IDW, 
It's yeah. funny, we were laughing going through the TV and movies. It was so crowded. But then we got to so the comic area. So crowded. Yeah, and we get to the comic area, and you're, you're like, you can breathe. But wait, isn't this called Comic Con? I yeah. no one's in the right. comic section. Right, right, right. So right, we just right. joke about that the whole time. Right. Yeah, well, it, sh it should be really interesting. I've never been, but I was going to say, like, with the X Men, for instance, is back again, right? It's on Netflix now, and they did the, uh, the, the, the Blu ray version, and now there's another comic book that's. X-Men 92 based on the series we did in the, in the 90s. And the reason why I think that that show and those comics keep coming back and are so universal is because the themes are classic. They're like Greek tragedies. They're like, you know, they've got, they're superheroes, but they're almost like gods. You know, they have powers and they have um, certain things that they stand for. And my character in that one, Rogue, it's interesting, I get a lot of fan mail from misfits. People who are either, you know, they just don't fit in, or they're made fun of in school, or they're in a wheelchair, they're homebound. And also, interestingly enough, people in jail, people in jail, especially men who are in jail, have written to me, and they say it's like their one and only consolation, like they love, this show and they love the character because it, it's all about good and evil, but what is good and evil? They're really two sides of the same coin. And depending on which path you choose, some people might call it evil, some people may say, well, you're fighting for the right. I mean, it's like what's going on on a world scale. There are two sides to every story. And it, depending on which side you live on and who, which community you're part of is the way you perceive what's happening. So these are really deep themes, but yet they, they hit us in the heart and in a gut level. And I think that that's what keeps these stories alive and keep coming back because we can relate to them for centuries. That's why Shakespeare is still popular because his plays are again, universal themes, big themes. And that's what I find really interesting about doing them as well. Next. Hello, um, my name's uh, James, and I was a uh, question for Brenda there. Was it you that approached IDW, or did IDW approach you to become yeah, for, was, for MLP? Sorry? For MLP. Yeah, yeah, I approached IDW for that. Um, I had been working at a graphic design firm, and I hated it. <laughs> so I was like, I want to make this comic thing a real thing. Like, I want to get out, out there and get in the industry. And my husband, Troy Little, actually had some creator-owned graphic novels out through IDW as well. He had three books out already, so he had the connection. And when I heard they were putting the My Little Pony comics out, and I was seeing the art starting to come out, and I was getting excited, because it's like, I like My Little Pony a lot, and this is something I can contribute to it. And what's the harm in just throwing a portfolio their way? And so Troy was actually in the same boat as me. He was on some animation storyboarding, and he's like, I don't want to do animation anymore. We, I want to make comics a thing too. Really get in the industry, like get on the mainstream titles, get my name out there, because unfortunately, creator own can really, you know, it's really, really hard to get your own ideas and your own books looked at. So it's, we're like, maybe if we put our names on some mainstream stuff, maybe that'll lead to different things. Like, who knows where that'll take us. So he was actually talking with Bobby Curnow, the editor on My Little Pony, about Powerpuff Girls, because they had just made the deal with Cartoon Network to, do, to license those properties. And eventually, uh, Sarah Gatos got on the My Little Pony, uh, the, sorry, not My Little Pony, the Powerpuff stuff. And Bobby was, because he, he was busy with what he had on his plate. But it was enough to kind of get the conversation started. And Troy's like, is it cool if my wife sends a portfolio? She's been working on some ponies, pony artwork. And he's like, yeah, it's cool. And so I did, I did for each of the main six characters, like a character sheet with different expressions and everything and a mock cover. And I just kind of made up a random story and did five page sample for that and colored it, lettered it, did everything and sent it his way. And Bobby's always been great. He got back to me so fast. So, and he's like, you know, I, I'm busy with deadlines this week, but give me a little bit and I'll get back to you on this. And I was like, cool, I didn't, even expect to hear from you that soon. Like I, I thought, you know, even just him responding is is super cool in my mind. So the worst they could say is no, and this will still be an awesome experience. 
And anyway, he got back to me a few weeks later and he's like, do you want to do the Applejack micro? And I'm like, do I ever want to do the Applejack micro? And it was awesome too, because Bobby himself was writing the script for that. So I worked directly with the editor and we just kind of hit it off. And yeah, he's been feeding me the more, more scripts whenever I need them. I had to take a little break because I, I had a baby, but he was very eager, you know, take your time, but as soon as you're back, I'll, I'll give you whatever you, you know, I'll give you a script. No, no problem, no questions asked. So. They've been super awesome, super kind, and I'm super fortunate to know such a great team. So. Awesome. Thank you. Hi there. Um, you've worked on a media other than the TV show, and you've done the Meet the Bodies, so you know a little about this. But I was wondering what all of your opinions was on the, the fan work that the fandoms created, the songs and the art and the ponies owners, stuff like that. Oh, to everyone. Sorry. Oh, to everyone. Um, <laughs> I've, unfortunately, a lot of my time is taken up just meeting my deadlines, and I kind of graze some of the fan stuff, but I don't really have time to look that much into it. But I think it's like super awesome. These fans are creating music and they're creating art and like the 3D prints they can get of the characters. Like, you get some high quality stuff. Like the fans are really dedicated and they're very creative and very talented to kind of take what inspires them about the show and like use their talents and. Yeah, I'm really interested in kind of finding out more about that stuff. It's, it's been, like I've been, my twin stepdaughters are actually, they were watching some of the CGI pony music videos. Like I've been seeing those models around images of it, but they started watching the songs on YouTube and stuff. And I'm like, how, like they modeled and rigged all these characters and they look really professional, like 3D modeling and all the lighting on them. Like that's fan made, that's insane, that's awesome. It's so cool, like, I, it blows my mind. Yes, when we were doing the documentary um, um, and researching it, some of the things in which we were coming up just online, and one of the things that I liked so much about the Brony community was that they, they were very uh, creative and very prolific. And I spoke to Lauren about it, and I said, you know, Lauren, it seems to me that everything should be pointing in. So, the, uh, we, and I'll explain that in a moment. I said, if, if we're gonna do a song, which explains um, the brony community or My Little Pony. How about if we have it animated by um, the, the community? And then therefore, how about if we begin, well, let's just make everything go point inward. Let's not have these, you know, somebody who doesn't know anything about it to it. And, uh, and then afterwards, uh, as we began searching around, we would search around, then we would send to, to her now, is this somebody that is of a quality nature here that we can use? And she began saying, you know, some of this stuff is really amazing. <laughs> I would hire these people off the shelf <laughs> to, to work over at, you know, I forget where she was at the time, Disney or Sony or whatever. And um, so, uh, it, so yes, the fan um, ge generated art and, uh, um, is, is sometimes really terrific. Thank you. And I just have to add, yeah, I love it when on my phone things keep coming up on like Messenger and things and, uh, uh, you know, of these these beautiful drawings that people have done and I, fi I find it exciting. I think anything that, that excites young people to, you know, to do something and create is fantastic. Um, you know, the, 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 whole, the whole thing with YouTube too, with people being able to get on and, and film themselves and create songs. I think it's wonderful, and um, you know, Dancing with the Stars, that started something too, cause, so that now people are, are, are actually getting into all these kinds of things and not afraid to say, yeah, I'm an artist. Whereas it used to be hidden a little bit more. Like I come from Truro, Nova Scotia, and it was always known for sports, but there were a lot of artists there, a lot of great talent, and they were always kind of shy to say, yeah, I like to draw, or, yeah, I like to sing, or whatever. And now they're coming out of the woodworks going, yeah, I'm, I love to sing, and yeah, watch me do this. I think that that's good for society. So keep it up. Thank you. All right, so we just have about five minutes remaining. Uh, hi. Um, I was just wondering, in the case of you all working in the medium so long... Uh, speak into the mic, if oh, you would. Sorry, just kind of... There we go. Uh, with all of you working in the medium so long and getting the scripts on a regular basis and giving life to the characters, uh, if you see something on a page that you think is a little out of character, how much influence would you have in 
changing the script to fit more of what you've drawn or how you think the character should say something? It depends, really. I mean, it depends on the director. I, I've, I've actually found uh, some great leeway, although most of the scripts are really well done. And I find that in the booth, when we're working, sometimes we'll all agree that something's just not working and we'll try it several ways and then cut it or change it on the day um, to make it fit. Yeah, I mean, it, it, what's your experience yeah, being? Uh, yes, um, um, they are far more willing to change things. And also it's very easy to change something. You know, if the line is blah, 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 and you think it should be, you know, da, 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 we, we just record it. And then we could also talk about it later and stuff like that. On, on camera, it could be far more difficult, especially if it were a TV show. Um, but um, um, as you said, the scripts are, are well written. Sometimes I, I will come up with, you know, well, you know, we could add a this or what have you. There's, there's, there are two types, uh, my, my experience with uh, voiceover actors, um, exclusively voiceover actors. I had a, um, a, an experience which was um, both illuminating and, um, and pretty annoying, um, which was I went to dinner one night with exclusively voiceover actors. Oh, yeah. I oh, think I my God. Say. Oh, oh my God! Yeah. I mean, it was they were all doing their voices. They were all yes. coming out of the woodwork with, yes. uh, you know, the, a, a grab bag of things, and you know, and a, as the drinks increased, the, the were we at the same dinner? <laughs> <laughs> After a while, it was it was the end of a long day, and I excused okay. myself. I said, "Oh, it's great." It's great. I'm like, <laughs> "You're right. It's true." Yeah, isn't it's it? just, and, and you don't usually. I mean, listen, you get a lot of blowhards in as I actors too at dinners, but this was a Join new... Join politics and see what that's like. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> this was a new, uh, a new uh, insight into all of that. Um, um, the, the other, the other uh, person oftentimes is the comedian who's brought in, yeah. who actually is brought in a little bit to do that type of stuff and he or she knows it. So then the lines really begin to go, start flying all over the place. Mm -hmm. For those people who are, whose training was just acting, mm -hmm. you, you come in and you, your job is actually to make it work. And you can add a little something here or a little something there, but the, 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 the puzzle and the, and the challenge is to make it work. And lastly, I have found with certainly My Little Pony stuff is that the scripts are really good. They're really well written. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, Whoa, this is, Exactly. I, I agree. That's so funny because, again, I, you know, I started off in theater. Then I went into film and television, and I didn't get into animation till I was 32, and my first series was X-Men. And so, and as I said, they wanted real actors. They wanted, they didn't want like cartoon, over the top acting, they wanted the real deal. So that was my first experience, and that we did that one for four years. But then after that, I started to get to know more of the animation community, a lot of these, and a lot of these people make a really good living just doing animation and just doing voiceover. And you're right, it, it, it's almost like, I think, a nervous habit where they ha feel a compulsion to have to constantly go into character, constantly be doing these voices, and it's exhausting, right? It is exhausting. It's exhausting. <laughs> it's, yeah. You know? right? yeah. Yeah, it was very difficult to have, because I was going to talk like that, and, oh, woo, 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 and you're like, stop it, just relax. Know, like, just be yourself, would you please? I don't, and some of them don't know how to be themselves. <laughs> That's right. Okay, one on. more. Thank you. <laughs> My daughters are huge My Little Pony fans. Um, my oldest reads all the comics. She just wanted to know, Brenda, uh, do you enjoy drawing My Little Pony characters? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> They're so, I, I, I love that balance of cute and quirky. That's totally my thing. And yeah, I just, I love drawing the different characters and the expressions and even having the chance to make up my own pony designs is 
it's incredible. And then again, with the fan community, seeing how they respond to the what I bring to it. And like, I designed a pirate pony, and then I saw a little clay figurine someone made of that pirate pony character. Like, it's so gratifying that I'm contributing in this way. So it's it's fun to draw, and it's got great great bonuses to it like that. So definitely, I would say yes. I am very lucky and very happy to be working on it. Fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. So I well, think that's the that's last it. question. Any any nice. wild last questions jumping out of the audience here? Oh, uh, there's one. <laughs> Line behind her. And you said it was the last question, so I didn't want that. Anyway, um, the pick your brain for anyone who has any creativity. Like if you were to add like a creature in the ever forest or uh, elsewhere in Equestria, like from stuff you know from mythology or something you made made up for yourself. Uh, what would it be like, or be kind of an uh, example, like a bog dog as a variant of the timber wolf, but more swampy bulldog? Um, there was a couple points in the comic where, again, it always comes back to the Discord issues because anything goes, because there's one I was doing when he was sleepwalking, and so these things would manifest itself, like just random things I and chaos comic. as he, yeah, as he slept walked through Ponyville. So I got to draw some weird things, like, fish with like shapely women legs and high heels and stuff like yep. and like and little tributes like little nods to my sisters because I need to look at this stuff <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a couple copies for sure okay yeah I set some aside for you honestly oh, great. Um, yeah I, a couple nods to my sisters because growing up my sister Susan my sister Carolyn and I we all did comics together and we'd like go off in our corners we draw a part and then we'd be like we finish the next part let's exchange stories so yeah, little little characters like we we were big into Pokemon, so we had like our own version of Pokemon stories we'd do. So I'm like, yeah, I slipped in that character just as a pony, or I I slipped in the characters that we did. So it's like inside jokes nobody but my sisters would get. So that's kind of what I like to do, like little Easter eggs for for my family, like that. It's really fun. And fish with shapely women right. legs. Well, thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you yeah, so thank much. You. Thank you. Alcohol!